So joining me now is my good friend, dear friend, beloved friend, Lise Merle, mom to many uh, and parents' rights activist. Uh, Lise, thanks for coming on the show. If people follow me on the internet, they know that we are friends in real life. Yes. And uh, besides all the other things that we have in common, we're staunch advocates for government transparency Mm -hmm. and parents' rights. And uh, you've got a wild story of your attempts to hold the government to account and to find out what they were doing um, with regard to their attacks on parents' rights behind closed doors. Um, And the story just spirals out of control from there. But instead of me telling you how or telling the world how great you are, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, Because um, you're a former broadcaster um, and a full time mom. Yeah. Well, well, hello, my beloved friend, Sheila Gunn-Reed, and hello, Rebel Sam. It is so good to be here today. My name is Lise Merle. I'm a mom of six and a writer and a little bit of a media personality from Saskatchewan. And as we all know, uh, parental rights have become quite, quite a quite a big topic du jour in Canada these last couple of years, especially in the wake of what happened in, in COVID. And being a big fan of Sheila Gunn-Reed on Rebel News uh, and hearing her talk about um, filing Freedom of Information Act requests on government institutions, I submitted a Freedom of Information Act request um, on the Regina Public School Division. This was back in June. And basically I asked for four things. I asked for information about myself. Um, I asked for information about my children. I asked for information about sexual orientation and gender ideology in schools because as you know, the government of Saskatchewan uh, basically said that we're not gonna have SOGI, uh, so the SOGI curriculum in our schools. And I also asked about pride events and the Rainbow Week of Equality, which is a brand new rainbow week that was introduced and foisted upon the Canadian public via taxpayer funds this last June. And what I got back was a fee estimate. Are you sitting down, Sheila? Are you sitting down? Yeah. They sent me back a fee estimate that said in order to get the records that I requested, it would cost me $29,247. What's the board? uh, The Regina Public School Division. Yes, this is the school division that my kids attend, (laughs) that my kids attend. Because as a parent, as the holder of the charter right to education, this is a little known fact in Canada, but parents are the explicit holders of the right to education in Canada and have the ability and have the right to direct all education related initiatives. The parents hold the right, the children do not have the right, the teachers do not hold the right. Parents hold the right to education in Canada and I wanted to know what my school division was up to when all of the parents were struggling to survive. So what they did was they sent me back an invoice that said, give us $30,000 and we'll let you know what we've been up to. But it goes further than that, Sheila. What they said was that if they had followed the methodology of the uh, Office of the Information and Privacy Commissioner of Saskatchewan, that my fee estimate would have come back at $197,000. This is for one school division in Canada. Can you imagine the resources and the waste that they've put on this uh, particular focus of their attention? Can you imagine $200,000 to figure out what your own school, school division has been doing? It's outrageous. It's absolutely outrageous. Well, and, you know, as someone who files for access to information all the time, this is a load of malarkey these are digital documents this mm-hmm. is you go into somebody's email you search by keyword they're not you know going down to the old printing press turning a crank cranking out a stack of paper then oh, getting in the file yeah. like big file folders this is no it's a, it's no, a they're this not would be a keyword somebody, search yeah they're not paying someone to scroll through a microfiche for hours on end yeah. and then jumping in the jalopy going down to the post office three hours away mm-hmm. sticking a ream of paper in the mail and then shipping it off to you these nope. are digital documents that will be sent to you by email mm-hmm. if indeed they ever send them to you yes 
Yeah. And, and not only, well, not only is it just an egregious cost, an egregious cost, and it tells, it tells me really everything I need to know about their focus and what their focus has been on this last couple of years. But, but it's also, it also contrav it may contravene the Saskatchewan Parents Bill of Rights. As you know, the government of Saskatchewan has been probably the most proactive government in the country as it pertains to what parents get to determine and what we get to know. And as part of the Parents Bill of Rights, there's a section that says parents have the ability to get their kids' school files. So how much of this are my kids' school files? I would argue all of it. Every part of what I'm asking for has to do with my kids' experience. And yet, Regina Public Schools, with their tagline, I respect, I'm responsible, I belong, I want to know, uh, say you have to pay us $30,000 in order to get this information. It's, it's outrageous. It's an absolute outrage. Now, uh, I showed the video in the intro to our interview, but I think the video of, well, a couple of videos, the one of you kicking the NDP <laughs> candidate off your lawn um, that went viral when Canada Proud posted it. You believe that teachers should keep secrets from parents? I may not agree with you. But do you believe that teachers should keep secrets from parents? Yes. You do believe that they yes. should keep secrets from parents? parents Get off my lawn. Thank you, Thank you friend. And then your speech at the uh, March for Parents, right? Million March for Children, yeah. Yeah, I think that puts you on the radar of your own school board. And I think that's why there are so many communications regarding you directly. Just so you get it all right, 90,000 Canadian children in $5 a day daycares, okay? This is what we get for $5 a day daycare in over 1,000 subsidized daycare facilities, including one in Regina and one in Lumsden, are conditioning babies, toddlers, preschool children to adopt gender theory and immerse them in gender immersion. The tide has now shifted. I would love to know what these people were saying about you behind your back mm -hmm. using the resources provided to them by your tax dollars. Yeah. Um, not only not only is it is it a breach of the social contract, right? We must have trust. Parents must be able to trust the teachers and school divisions and the entire education mechanism. And what they've done is violate that trust. Um, but it's but it's also but it's also really telling in what they think they can get away with. And to be completely honest, I'm a mom that's done playing nice when it comes to this. These are my kids. I hold the rights and I'm going to hold your feet to the fire until you start producing what I'm demanding you produce. And and this goes for this goes for all levels of of government. I'm just I'm just done being uh, dumb splained. That right. that you know this really isn't any of my business, and it's not really happening. And you know, just trust the experts. We all know how You're far the experts. The expert <laughs> As Scott Mo says, as Premier Scott Mo says, parents are the experts of their own kids. We must be given a voice at this. Not not only a seat at the table, we must be sitting at the head of the table. And um, God help. God, God help any bureaucrat that tries to get in my way on this issue. I'm done.